we have already studied mechanics of a single particle and in the discussion we discussed about distance displacement covered by the particle under the action of a force velocity acceleration momentum and law of conservation of momentum work and energy for the single particle now we are to discuss the mechanics of a system of particles system of particles consists of two or more particles when there are more particles the there is some physical difference of the mechanics from the mechanics of single particle and the mechanics of system of particle we can say that the mechanics of system of particle is generalized and mainly here the third law newton's third law is here uh, applicable uh, and we see the situation in this lecture first of all we define center of mass of system of particles we consider n particles with masses m1 m2 mn with position vector respectively r1 r2 rn and uh, these position vectors can be described by ri that is equal to xi i plus x uh, j xi j plus uh, xi k and the center of mass of the system of particle is defined as uh, rcm is equal to m1 r1 plus m2 r2 m1 r1 plus m2 r2 plus so on m plus m n r n uh, divided by m1 plus m2 plus so on m n in summation notation uh, we can write rcm is equal to sigma m i r i divided by sigma m i and this is equal to sigma m i r i divided by capital m where capital m is equal to sigma m i the total mass of the system the components of rcm are xcm is equal to sigma m i x i divided by m y c m is equal to sigma m i y i divided by m and z c m is equal to sigma m i z i divided by m the velocity of the center of mass v c m is defined as the derivative of the r c m center of mass the velocity v c m is derivative of r c m as in the usual sense and the acceleration of the center of mass a c m is derivative of v c m velocity of center of mass now we define linear momentum of the system of particles uh, this is uh, uh, same like uh, the momentum of single particle that is defined as the product of mass and velocity and uh, now we define the uh, linear momentum of the system of particles so we have n particles uh, with the masses m1 m2 mn with position vectors respectively r1 r2 rn and moving with velocities v1 v2 vn and having momentum respectively p1 p2 pn then p1 is equal to m1 v1 p2 is equal to m2 v2 pn is equal to mn vn the total momentum of the system is equal to p and it is sum of the individual momentums p1 plus p2 plus pn we put the values of p1 that is m1 v1 value of p2 m2 v2 plus value of pn that is mn vn we use the sigma notation mi vi the sigma notation mi vi and now we multiply and divide by capital m this equation 
the capital M total mass that is constant is multiplied and divided. And this is the VCM. So, uh, the total momentum is mass times VCM. The total uh, momentum is equal to total mass multiplied by velocity of center of the mass. And this is a very beautiful result uh, because the center of mass is, is that means that the total mass of the system is con concentrated at one point. So, uh, the system becomes uh, simplified with this uh, concept of center of mass and uh, for the total momentum we do not have to find the individual momentum but we have to uh, multiply the total mass with the uh, velocity of the center of mass and the it becomes very simple. So, law of conservation of momentum of the system of particles we consider n particles with masses m1, m2, mn with position vectors respectively r1 R2, Rn, the external forces acting on the particles respectively, respectively F1, F2, Fn, the internal forces of interaction between any two particles say I and J or Fij where Fii is equal to 0. We cannot neglect this force in the system of a system of particle. Uh, every particle exerts force on other particle. I particle exerts force on J particle and J particle within the system uh, exerts force uh, on I, Ith particle. So, this is the force of interaction due to the Jth particle on the Ith particle. If I, I is equal to 0 means that uh, the force due to the same particle, uh, force of interaction, internal force. Uh, of attraction due uh, to the ith particle and the ith particle is 0. Uh, now, the equation of ith particle is fi plus fij is equal to mi d square ri divided by dt square. fi uh, the external force uh, and uh, sigma fij is the force uh, some of the forces of all other particles on the ith particle. That means uh, the force due to first particle on the ith particle, the second particle on the ith particle and another particle on the ith particle. So, total force by the Newton's second law, the total force on the ith particle is equal to the mass of the ith particle uh, into acceleration of the ith particle. This is the second law of uh, uh, Newton and uh, this is the uh, third law of Newton. This is the main difference for the uh, single particle, uh, motion of the single particle and for the motion of the system of n particles, we have to take into account the internal forces of interaction and uh, 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 in the consideration of the Newton's third law of motion. But uh, uh, this force as we see now that uh, uh, again in the uh, second part second uh, law of Newton, uh, the total rate of change of the ith uh, particle, uh, where Fi is the total external force on the ith particle and the sigma Fij is the sum of all the external forces due to all other particles uh, and this is equal to rate of change of the momentum. Now, uh, this is on the ith particle and for the total system for the n particles. Uh, we use summation uh, on this equation here sigma fi here sigma sigma fij here sigma uh, dpi over dt on the left hand side the second in the second term uh, fij is equal to minus fji uh, this is newton third law of motion uh, the force force of the jth particle on the ith particle and this is the force of Is particle on the jth particle. The two particles 
have equal but opposite force uh, so the summation here will cancel because of the uh, two particles have uh, equal force but opposite in direction so uh, the total sum will be equal to zero this will finish and uh, f sigma f i is equal to sigma d p i over d t sigma f i is equal to d p over d t the total momentum and uh, the sum uh, the total external forces on the system is equal to rate of change of uh, total linear momentum of the system so we get this result uh, and uh, now uh, if uh, there is uh, no external forces on the particle of the system so that fi is equal to zero and one thing uh, more that uh, we want to say is that uh, in the system of uh, uh, n particles the mathematically uh, this is uh, this relation is same as in as in the mechanics of single particle that uh, total external force is equal to rate of change of the momentum but physically uh, we have to consider this one so there is difference this is the main uh, point in this article that uh, in the system of n particles we have to consider the third law of Newton. But mathematically, uh, due to simplification, the result uh, is uh, similar to that uh, of the single particle uh, up till this one. Now, if the force, uh, uh, there is no external force on the particles of the system, so that uh, Fi, the force on the external force on the ith particle is equal to zero, and uh, uh, for external force on total part, full particle is equal to zero uh, this means left hand side is equal to zero then right hand side is equal to zero then p is constant so that uh, the total momentum is conserved so in in the absence of we can say in the absence of the external forces uh, the total momentum of the system of n particles is constant this is law of conservation of the of momentum now we use uh, this uh, law uh, law of conservation of momentum uh, to a physical problem this is an example this states that uh, at some point in its trajectory a ballistic missile of mass m breaks into three fragments of masses m by three each one of the fragments continues on with an initial velocity v naught of the missile just before breakup the other two pieces go up at right angles to each other with equal speeds. Find the initial speeds of the later two fragments in terms of V naught. Now uh, there is a break. Uh, first we have a missile of mass n moving with velocity V naught. This is initial uh, consideration. Uh, at the moment on its uh, trajectory the the system breaks into three pieces and uh, the three pieces go in different directions uh, and mass of the three after the break the mass of the three uh, pieces fragments is uh, n by three equal mass uh, and uh, some conditions are given on the velocity of the fragments that uh, the in uh, the first uh, one of the fragments continues with the initial velocity uh, v naught of the missile just uh, before breakup. The other two pieces go off at right angles to each other uh, with equal speeds. Uh, this is the condition on the velocity and we have to find the velocity uh, of the later two fragments uh, in terms of v naught. Now, uh, we use the law of conservation of momentum that the momentum before breakup is equal to momentum after breakup. Suppose that V1, V2, V3 are the velocities of the three pieces after breakup. Uh, this piece 1 with velocity m1, other second uh, particle m by 3 with velocity v2 and this one moving with v3. Uh, and the uh, momentum before 
uh, uh, breakup is MV naught. Uh, and momentum after break is m by 3 v1 plus m by 3 v2 plus m by 3 v3. So, momentum before uh, breakup is equal to momentum after breakup. This is the total momentum after breakup uh, and this is total momentum before breakup uh, and uh, we know that the momentum of the system, momentum of the system n particle is equal to mass, total mass, mass times the uh, velocity of center of mass. So, we have these relations uh, and uh, now we divide the relation by m and we get Vcm is equal to V naught 1 by 3 V1 plus 1 by 3 V2 plus 1 by 3 uh, V3. Uh, we, have, we get this one by after dividing by m and now we multiply by 3 and we get 3 V naught is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. Uh, and uh, we have some conditions that uh, V1 is equal to V0 by 2, uh, V2, V3 is equal to 0, V2 is equal to V3. These conditions are on the velocity and uh, now we put the values here, 3 V0, uh, this is uh, V0 by 2 and this is uh, V2 and this is V3. Now subtract V0 by 2 from the left hand side. This is 5 by 2 V0, V2 plus V3. Uh, here, this relation, uh, we get the dot product on both sides. Uh, in the next step, we see uh, 5 by 2 V0, 5 by 2 V0 and uh, V2 plus V3 dot V2 plus V3. Uh, v0 dot V0, V0 square, circular. And uh, this is uh, uh, v2 v dot v2, v2 dot v3, v3 dot v2 uh, plus v3 dot v3. This is a killer v2 square dot product uh, of the vectors. This is dot product of the vector uh, and this is commutative property. They are equal. So, they become 2 v2 v3. But v2 and v3 are at right angles to each other. So, their dot product vanishes. Uh, and this term uh, becomes 0, we have V2 square plus V, uh, this V3 is equal to V2. This condition is given that V3 is equal to V2. So, this is V2, this is 0 and V3 is equal to V2. Uh, then we have this one, uh, uh, 2 V2 square. Uh, now, we uh, interchange the terms, the left, uh, right hand term to the left and left hand to the right. And we simplify V2 square is equal to 25 over 8 V naught square and uh, V2 is equal to 5 over 8 under root V naught that is equal to 1.77 V naught. Similarly, V3 is equal to uh, V2 and V3 is also is equal to 1.77 V naught. So, that the other two particles go with uh, more velocity uh, than the initial velocity. Uh, now, uh, we find the relation of kinetic energy of a system of particles. So we consider n particles with masses m1, m2, mn moving with velocities v1, v2, vn. The total kinetic energy T is equal to half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square plus half mn vn square. And the total kinetic energy is equal to sigma half m i v i square. Uh, we know that a dot a in the vector is equal to a square and uh, t is equal to sigma 1 by 2 m i here v square. v square is equal to uh, v, I, uh, v i square. v i square is equal to v i dot v i. Replace this one. Also the velocity relative to the center of mass v i is equal to v c m plus v i bar. Now, T is equal to put the value of uh, V i here V c m plus V i bar dot V c m plus V i bar and uh, now we multiply, we take the dot product of these two terms V c m dot V c m plus V c m uh, dot uh, V c m bar and uh, plus V i bar dot V c m uh, and uh, 
plus uh, v i bar dot v i bar. This uh, is dot product and uh, VCM scalar. scalar. Uh, this is uh, with uh, commutative law of uh, scalar product. Uh, this, these two are equal. So this is 2 VI VCM and this is VI bar square. This is the kinetic energy. And uh, now we uh, 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 expand uh, the bracket uh, and we multiply by 1 by 2 MI inside and take the constant out of the sigma term and 2 is here finish uh, 1 by 2 mi vi square the second summation this one uh, 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 fin uh, this one uh, vanishes becomes 0 uh, and we are left uh, with uh, the, these two terms p is equal to half vcm square mi plus uh, half mi vi is square this is the total kinetic energy of the system of uh, particles and uh, this is somewhat different from that of the single particle and uh, uh, this uh, becomes the total kinetic energy.